bit of a practical video today. Uh, I was just doing some maintenance on the boat and I thought, yeah, I should probably get the camera rolling for this because I think a few people are going to find this uh, helpful, hopefully. <laughs> Today I'm looking at inflatable punctures, leaks, uh, thinking about some emergency repair ideas and just some general tips. It doesn't matter what inflatable you've got, whether it's an inflatable kayak, a uh, stand-up paddleboard, a dinghy, rib, uh, this will even work on paddling pools and hot tub spas. Uh, it's all the same. I'm going to be repairing a puncture. I'm also going to be investigating what I suspect is a leaky valve. Now I'm hoping most people see this video way before they ever get a, a puncture in their inflatable uh, because you know, it, it can take quite a quite a bit of time to cure the glues and everything like that. But I, I know that some people are gonna be here because they, they've Googled uh, inflatable puncture repair and they haven't got that much time. So um, I'm hopefully, as long as you're not too far from civilization, might be able to, to help you out with a couple of get out of jail tips. Now, my first tip before we start is, uh, when it comes to inflatable watercraft and, and punctures, don't panic. Uh, punctures are a perfectly normal part of owning an inflatable, it's just like having a bike really. Every now and again, you're gonna get a puncture and you, know, you don't need to worry about, you know, am I gonna have to send my expensive inflatable off to be repaired or anything like that? You can DIY it with just a few simple things, uh, just like repairing a bicycle tire. Bit of background, uh, it's the last day of January, the sun's come out, so it's basically spring now, isn't it? Sorry if I've just jinxed that for you, but there we go. I got my boat out of winter storage, Thought I'd pump it up, give it a clean bit of maintenance and everything, and immediately hear that ominous tss, accompanied with a immediate drop in pressure. So for me, finding the puncture was really easy. You know, I just um, I, it was so loud. I just I just followed the sound basically, and uh, but if you know it, it's a pinhole puncture and you can't immediately see where it is, then all you need is a uh, nice little uh, spray bottle of soapy water and then you just spray down the boat and wherever the puncture is you'll see it sort of bubbling up and that's the easiest way to locate your puncture. Regardless of manufacturer, make, model, it, it doesn't really matter. Most modern inflatable watercraft will come with uh, some spare rubber patches for repairs. Uh, sometimes they'll come with glues as well, sometimes not. Uh, they'll also usually come with uh, the, this. This is a, a, a valve wrench. Now, don't worry if, um, if, if they don't. Uh, you can order any of this stuff online quite easily, quite inexpensively. And I'll, I'll leave some links in the description to sort of point you in the right direction. So for the puncture repair, we're gonna take our you know, spare rubber and we're gonna cut out a, a patch a bit larger than the, the puncture area itself and essentially glue it on. When you're cutting out your patch, it's important to make sure that all the corners are rounded. Uh, you don't want any straight edge corners because they peel off much easier, especially if they snag on something. So yeah, just get it everything nice and rounded. Before I start, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna draw an outline around the patch so I can be nice and neat with the sanding and then applying the adhesive. We need to make sure that the area around the puncture and the patch itself uh, is, is really clean, free of dirt, grease, oil, uh, residue of salt from if you've been in the sea. And you know, the best way to do that is with acetone. This is just nail polish remover. Uh, you can also use rubbing alcohol in a pinch. Not forgetting the patch, of course. With the puncture area clean, we now need to sand it down. Uh, so we're just gonna use regular household medium grit sandpaper. And that's to, just to give it a rough abrasive uh, surface, uh, which just helps the glues adhere a bit better.
Now, when it comes to the gluing, uh, it's really important to get this bit right. So uh, those uh, patches that come with your craft, sometimes they also come with a tube of adhesive, sometimes a two-part adhesive. If that's the case, then that is exactly what you need to use. Uh, if they don't, then what you need to do is you need to check what material your, your boat is. In my case, it's PVC, and you must use an adhesive that's suitable for that material. Now, more importantly, there are marine-specific adhesives that are exactly for this kind of re repair job. So that's what you need. Uh, I've just been down to my local marina and they've you know, helped me pick out a PVC two-part inflatable boat repair adhesive. And so that's what I'm gonna use. Now to do this properly, you need time. Whatever glue you use, uh, it's going to be at least 24 hours to cure. In my case, this one uh, is going to be a minimum of 48 hours to cure, but recommended for seven days. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to leave it for. Um, I, now, I understand that, you know, some people might be, be Googling this because they're in the middle of a crisis and, you know, haven't got the luxury of time, you know, not even 24 hours. So um, if that is the case, then you, you, you can probably get away with like, um, say for this boat, it would be like a PVC super glue, leave it for an hour, that might get you home. But then when you do get home, uh, you, remember you've got a temporary repair there. So you wanna, don't rip it off and start again. I would leave it on there, but go over it with a larger patch, uh, use a proper marine specific adhesive and cure it for the correct amount of time. And then, then you've got your permanent repair. Right, I'm going to mix up my adhesive and get this glued on. I'm not going to give any specific gluing uh, like uh, instruction here because you should follow the instructions of whatever glue product you're using. I don't want to confuse people because they're not all the same. Obviously we want to make sure we have no air gaps. If you've got a little, one of those little rollers, great. If not, like I haven't, you can use the back of a spoon. The last step is to um, get it under pressure while it cures. If for whatever reason you haven't got the time to do a full permanent repair, uh, as long as you can get hold of uh, some really decent super glue, you can get by with a temporary repair. Uh, now, one way to always make sure you've got super glue on you, because you know, with anything in the outdoors, you fail to prepare and you prepare to fail, uh, just make sure you've got a, just a regular bicycle puncture repair kit. Uh, this is just a cheap one from Wilco, like a few pounds. Um, the patches that come with this are, you know, they're quite small, which is fine for pinhole punctures. Uh, so what I've done is um, I've cut out some larger patches out of that um, manufacturer supplied spare rubber, the stuff that I showed you earlier. Um, and then that just lives with my first aid kit, something else you should always have on you when you go paddling. We do have some emergency repair tape options at our disposal as well, such as the clear repair tape from Gorilla. Um, this is, yeah, really simple. You just rip a piece off like a Band-Aid, stick it on your puncture and it should get you out of trouble. Uh, it's airtight, watertight, and um, obviously no one wants to walk around with a roll of this on them all the time. So uh, what you can do is get a piece of card. This is a old train ticket. And And we could just tape over. A few goes round.
There you go. Then you've got a credit card size piece. Uh, stick it in your life jacket pocket. Then you've always got some emergency repair tape on you. The clear tape is great for lower pressured boats. I'm thinking, for instance, uh, in Texas entry level boats. Um, they're very popular, so I'm sure that'll come in handy for a lot of people. Not so much the higher pressure boats, such as these high pressure drop stitch boats. I did try a piece on that puncture and it was okay, but it didn't quite hold. Uh, so we need something a little bit stronger. This is also from Gorilla. Uh, I'm not sponsored, by the way. I'm just trying to help you out. So if you could smash that like button, it'd be great. Uh, this is the waterproof patch and seal tape. Uh, this stuff is like the new clear option for puncture repairs. Super, super strong. Uh, I haven't actually tried a, a piece on this puncture because this stuff is permanent. Um, it is uh, suitable for inflatables. Um, I think, you know, cutting out a few uh, patches of this and keeping them in your spares kit um, be like a real good get out of jail free card, um, especially if you go, you know, quite wild and remote. Something else I wanted to have a look at was this other inflated chamber here. Uh, it's been losing pressure really, really slowly, uh, not like the other one which went down immediately. Uh, this has been inflated for a couple of hours now and there's still air in it. Uh, it's just, a, you know, it's gone a little bit saggy. Um, uh, so I've done this usual thing, I've put it to pressure, I've gone around with the spray bottle looking for punctures, can't see anything on the surface. So uh, I suspect that this might be a, a leaky valve. Um, we're going to do the same test to see if that's the problem. Our trusty uh, soapy water, Just dish soap and water. And there we go. We can see some bubbling coming up here. See, it's, it's that slow leak, so it's just enough just to blow a couple of bubbles there. Not as obvious as a puncture. Right, so we know it's the valve. Uh, basically, these are screwed in, and uh, over time, with you constantly you know, attaching and detaching your pump, uh, they can just come a little bit loose. Um, like I said before, don't worry if you've got a leaky valve. Uh, this is what the, the valve wrench is for. Uh, we're just gonna tighten it up. Uh, this is a, a perfectly routine bit of inflatable maintenance. Um, in fact, you know, at least once a year, you wanna go around all your valves, making sure everything's nice and tight particularly if you're on a SUP, because these leaks can be so subtle, you don't even notice it, and it could be uh, affecting your performance on the water, slowing you down. Now, an important note, it's really important that you don't over-tighten these valves. Uh, I know it's tempting to think, oh, it's been leaking, I need to really tighten it to keep it airtight. Now, you, if you over-tighten, you could do irreparable damage, whereas this, this is a simple problem. This is reparable, so uh, let's keep it that way. Now, I wouldn't tighten valves under pressure. We're gonna deflate the chamber first. And, uh, oops, gonna get soapy water in my face. <laughs> God, that sun's so bright. It's like summer already, yeah? Maybe I should get the paddling pool out. So I'm just gonna put my wrench in and then just very, very carefully, very, very gingerly, just gonna tighten it just until I can feel a little bit of resistance. Then we'll inflate it, soapy water test. If it's not ready, that's fine. We'll just deflate it and do it again. Don't rush this. We'll do it as many times as we need to to get, to get it right. Okay. Yeah, that's, that had come quite loose, that one. Let's try again. Yep, see, still a little bit of bubbling there. Okay, that feels 
quite tight. I don't want to overdo it. Buttons out. No more bubbling. That stopped. So we know we've got an airtight seal. Uh, just to make sure, I'm going to leave this for an hour, see if it's sagged uh, or if it's held. Right, I'm back from lunch. Now let's uh, see how we're doing. Look at that. Solid as a rock. So, we know uh, it's not losing pressure, and uh, what we've done has fixed the problem. Right, that means there's just one thing left, and that's uh, for the repair patch to cure. Uh, 48 hours, and that'll be ready for the water. Um, I'm away this weekend anyway, so uh, I'm going to leave it for the whole uh, recommended seven days. And, like, that's the benefit of doing this stuff, you know, before the season starts. You, know, you don't want to you know, hit that, that first glorious weekend we get and have it ruined because you find you've got maintenance to do. You know, you want to be ready to get straight on the water. So, um, at this point... Uh, I don't know whether this has worked or not, by the way, so I really hope it does, because otherwise this video is ruined. <laughs> right, uh, let's um, get it indoors and uh, have another look in seven days. My golly, I think it worked. Probably leave it for a bit under pressure, just uh, make sure I haven't got any uh, little bits that didn't quite glue, you know, any little slow uh, release punctures or anything. But um, I, yeah, looks pretty solid to me. Job done. Um, and of course, the only real test is uh, to take it out on the water. So nice excuse for a paddle. success uh, both the puncture and the leak all good uh, feels like a brand new boat and uh, you know what it's uh, just oh, it's so nice being back on the water you know that first paddle after the winter feeling just oh, love it uh, thanks so much guys for watching and to the end as well uh, if you found this useful then hit that like button and uh, maybe check out some of my other videos as well you know maybe maybe join me on one of the many paddling adventures I've got planned this year okay I'll see you in the next one cheers Thank you.